Today we will be going over switch loops. You will notice this in a lot of older homes when you get to a switch, you are going to come across the single pole switch that has a white wire and a black wire on it. This white wire is not a neutral, usually this will have some black tape on it. This white wire is now your power. Power comes in on the white wire when you turn the switch on, goes through, goes out on the black wire, up to your switch, or up to your light. So let me get up on the ladder so you can see better. So what we have here is, it's coming back up, so this is the load to my light. This is the power coming in from the source. This is my neutral. Okay? This power needs to tie to this white wire. So I have power coming in from my source. Being tied to the white wire. Going down on the switch. So this was my neutral coming from the source. This is going to go directly onto my fixture. This is coming up from the switch. This is going to go onto my light as the loop. So this would just go on to the gold screw. This would go on to the silver screw. Now one of the issues you guys have, I'm not going to tighten those down, is what do I do with the ground wires? Because as you can see, on this device, there is nothing for ground. The purpose of the ground is for the non-current parts, metal parts of a fixture. Since there's no metal, there's nothing to ground. So what we will do is take the grounds and just wire nut them off. We don't cut them out because what if in the future someone comes along with a fixture that does have metal parts, then it needs to be grounded. All right. This in residential wiring now is illegal. We can't use this because as you notice when we get down to the switch, in the switch box, I have a hot and a load. I no longer have a neutral. Some of our newer electronic switches require a neutral, or if I want to tap an outlet off of this, I don't have a neutral anymore. So this is strictly for commercial industrial wiring, where we're going to be doing it in uh, conduit, EMT, or like I said, in older wiring, where at that time it was legal. Right. In newer homes, now I'm going to show you how we do it in newer homes. My power comes in on a black wire. I am actually going to take this black wire, wire on it, and take it back down to the switch. So now I got power running down to the switch. So this black wire will have power on it. Now I want to go out on the red wire. The red wire is going to be my load. So now I'm going to come back up with the red wire as my load. So the red wire will go on to the gold screw, okay? Now, I have the neutral for the light and a neutral going down to the box. So I would take those, put a pigtail on them, take them to the white for the neutral onto the silver screw of the light. Now this, this neutral will be on this wire going to this wire going down to my switch and now my switch has a neutral wire 
But switches do not need neutrals because remember, this was the power. That was the power. This was the load. And then what I do with the neutral wire is I just put a wire nut on it. And I keep it in the box. This way in the future, if I come across that I have a switch that needs a neutral wire, I have a neutral in the box. If I want to add an outlet to it, you know, drill a hole, drop down, add an outlet, I still have a neutral wire in that box. This was uh, the simulation from the Cengage for one of your homework assignments. Uh, and this is how it had to be wired up. Okay, So I have a neutral in the box, but I'm not using it. That's it.